How did I end up with $200,000 in credit card debt? And here's what I learned about, and here's what I learned along the way. There we go. Alrighty. Howdy, Fi guys. I landed $200,000 in the hole. Howdy, Fi guys. <laughs> I never thought I'd be here sharing my story about how I ended up with $200,000 in credit card debt. But hopefully my tale can serve as a warning to others because of the dangers and iteration, the irrational spending. Wow. So that's okay. So it's irrational spending. I was wondering 200,000 on credit. That's a lot. Like I was trying to figure out like, how does that happen? You know, that's yeah. it's like a house. You know, uh, that's not a very good house. I, mean, I guess it depends what somewhere. part of the country you're in. Dude, I'm, yeah. somewhere, somewhere you you, you give me 200,000 and a flight to Thailand. I'm basically an emperor. I could look good. But I guess to be fair, I'm from where like we live in Phoenix now, where the start average median starter home is half a million dollars. And then I'm originally Basically. from I'm California, where average yeah. median you starter home is a million dollars if you're lucky, or you can choose whatever shed at Home Depot you want. Yeah. Beach is looking good. I wouldn't mind living on the beach. Uh, I'm currently 30 years old and I'm trying to pay off all the mess that I have created in the past. It all started. Innocently enough, I got my first credit card when I was about 19 and a simple $500 limit for emergencies. But the thrill of swiping that piece of plastic quickly became an addiction. By the time I was 22, I had five credit cards and $10,000 in debt. Okay, so he put himself into $10,000 of debt in three years. Yeah, he's doing a golly, credit score tank speed run. I like that. And now, and now he's 30, so hope, um, it sounds like he just <laughs> kept on, kept, kept it going. Running it up. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting better every year. I'm learning how to make more, how to, no. more money. The points, though, would go crazy. Bro, there is no amount of points that's worth 200. <laughs> is that a challenge, bro? Is that a challenge? Is that a challenge, bro? Is that a challenge, bro? Do it. Um, then I got really into e-commerce and thought I was going to be the next millionaire through dropshipping. I had no business, no knowledge, and spent many thousands of dollars on courses that I thought would help me out. I was really just irrationally spending money on ads and inventory and et cetera, without even making any sales. How silly. Wait, did Dominic, didn't you do e-commerce stuff or is this? Uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> I did. I gave it a good old college try. Not for me. Not for me. Not for me. I did like building the website though. That was fun. Okay. By 26 or about 27, I convinced myself that I needed to be living a luxurious lifestyle that would somehow teach me about wealth. Hmm. I lost track of my I... due dates, missed my payments, and watched my credit score take a free fall. Desperation led to even more reckless decisions, and it, I ended up taking out cash advances to cover other bills, ignoring the astronomically high fees on said action don't want to pull cash on a card don't please don't my you know, most thing I just think, yeah go for one it one thing i was thinking that what he said there is like it what he's pretty put it i needed to live a luxurious lifestyle and hope that it would somehow teach me about wealth so his thought process was in order for me to be wealthy i have to live like a wealthy person and then i'm yeah. just going to manifest it into existence because i deserve it i'm gonna get mine it's not a hey, that thing works. No, <laughs> not it at all, buddy. But the story has a good ending, I'm hoping. My most irrational purchase was buying a $17,000 watch. I immediately recant my statement previously. On a $35,000 a year salary. So he was, he was only making $35,000 and he put himself into $200,000 debt. He must have been trying really hard to open up a lot of credit cards. He probably has more credit cards than I do. Probably. With a higher limit? I doubt that. I doubt it. Yeah, you got like unlimited limits. I'm now, I now have a, okay, sorry. I, I saw the sentence coming up and I thought it said, I now have a 22 credit score. And I'm like, what? 22? <laughs> what kind of Taiwanese crap is this? Ain't no such thing as 22. It only goes down to like, like what, 400 or something like that? Yeah, you have to try. Yeah, you gotta try. <laughs> I now have 22 credit cards and I'm still trying to get myself out of this situation. Okay, so he has more credit cards than I do. He does have more. You have 16, don't you? Yeah. Something, yeah. Like something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Moral of the story is be careful with debt, guys. I've been listening to your podcast and wanted to thank you for all the knowledge that you have given me thus far. I know that getting myself out of this 
will be very difficult and a long road ahead, but I know I can make it through this rough time and I will learn from my experience. Thank you so much for your support and sharing this experience to others so that they don't end up in the same place. Cash advances, reckless chances. Please learn from my life's closely, my life's closing dances. Okay. okay costly okay. dances. Costly. Yeah. You Words work on the money hard. side, I'll work on the English side. Good <laughs> Lord. Anyway, so that's kind of wild. That's kind of wild. That, that takes guts. That takes Dude, guts yeah. to put it out there. To, to admit it to yourself. Yeah. So thank you so much. Cash advances, reckless chances. Learn, please learn from my life's costly dances. That's clearly his name. Uh, that, that's that, that's really brave of you to come out here and just try to share with share with the listeners so that they don't end up in the same situation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really easy for other people to listen to this story and be like, "How stupid! Like, how dumb is this guy to do that? I would never do that." Yeah, yes, easier than you you're think. out. Yeah, you're out there doing something very similar, and we're never aware of what our blind spots are. That's why they're called blind spots. We don't know what they are. We take sometimes it takes somebody else who's trained to actually see it and then more importantly not just see it and tell you about it but get you to see it get you to realize that there, there's a mistake here that there's a problem before you end up in a bad situation um you know one thing that i like about five friday feedback is typically the person asks questions you know what do i do i think based off of this person listening to the podcast they know what they have to do and they know what i'm going to say they know i'm going to say you're going to have to freaking create a budget you have to start trying to make more money. You have to start spending less money. And then you have to just throw it at the credit, throw it at the debt as fast as you can. We have 22 credit cards with $200,000. Even if we were to consolidate all of that, typically there is a three to 4% consolidation. That's going to cost you a pretty good amount of money just to consolidate them. And then if you don't pay off the $200,000 of debt in typically six months to 18 months, depending on that 0% interest, well, now it's going to retrograde all of the debt that you didn't pay back. You know, I don't know what this guy's current income is anymore or what this guy's current income is. Well, you I said 35000 We well, said it was $35,000. It was, okay. He said that was my most irrational purchase. I don't know if that still is. True. But if you're really at $35,000 salary with a $200,000 credit card debt, average APR in a credit card is anywhere from 15 to 25%. Remember the rule of 72. Any amount of money divided by, or any whatever you compound your money at divided by 72 is what it takes to double. So if yeah. you have, let's just go 25% interest rate, 72 divided by 25 is basically three. Every three years, your, your debt will double. Making minimum payments is never going to get you where you want to go if you're only making $35,000. Don't suggest bankruptcy lightly. Please go back and listen to our bankruptcy one if you think that it is just something that you do for funsies. That's episode 32 of the Five Guys. It is not. But in this circumstance, $200,000 in debt, if you're only making $35,000 a year, I don't know how the hustle is going to get you out of it. You're going to have to get a much better paying job. Yep. Something in the that, 70 to $80,000 range would be nice. Good start. Yep. Very There's no choice, debt. no choice, but that, but to increase make more money, money, decrease spending and but, do not use a credit card anymore. You're done. <laughs> yeah, you're you, done. You buddy. don't deserve it. Yeah. 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 yeah, you, can yeah, get yeah, it back, yeah you can get it back later, but right now it's gone for you. It's done. It's done. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I would, I would clear them out. I'd have maybe one credit card, 5,000 limit, Just 500 that. limit, 500, like, even better. 500. Yeah. I'm I just would, thinking for like, a, for like a hotel though. You can't, you know, it's like. Let's I was a hotel emergency. What? Well, no, no. I mean, I mean, like that's what I'm saying. Like maybe like two thousand, two thousand dollar card limit. What? Like have one credit card. That way you can put a hotel on, you know, on the on the credit card because you have to have a credit what? card to go for the hotel. Bro, you're trying to pay off two hundred thousand dollars in debt. I know. I'm thinking like twenty thousand. I'm thinking about a little bit. Maybe I'm too far out. I'm too far out. My bad. I'll reel it back <laughs> in. Anyway, best of luck. Best of I luck. cannot Thank wait you for sharing maybe a year or two, a couple years down the line, reach back out. See if you got it. See if you locked in, killed the 200,000. What's crazy about that is like, we talked about earlier in the podcast, it might've might been Monday's pod, but if he can cut the $200,000 with debt, let's say it takes him five years, right? Five years. 
he can also say he didn't have any debt. Say he had no debt. You could also save the two hundred thousand dollars. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? How like money is different, but it's the same at the same time. You know, it's mm-hmm. like the the analogy you used earlier with the I think it was the mother of uh, you could either pay this way or not spend it. You know, something like that. I'm just okay. thinking like, like, dang, dude. It, but if he gets that hustle muscle and really gets a better job and all this different other stuff, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm rambling. Maybe I'm rambling. No, I, I, I think one of the best things that, and there's not a lot of good things that putting yourself into debt does. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it's, it's bad. But we try to look at the positives because it's all that we can do. In this situation, if he learns to really buckle down, really live off of less money than he's making for a number of years to pay off that debt, once he pays off that debt, if he continues to live that lifestyle, that Spartan lifestyle, and instead of putting that money at the debt, now he gets to put it at investments. Well, now he has the twofer. Now he has more money going towards investment and he's lowered his lifestyle cost, which means he now needs less money in investments to get to financial independence. So is this going to be a hard road? Yes. And is there anything that a financial advisor, a financial coach, anything can do to make this easier? No, I think a lot of people, they'll get upset with financial advisors because they'll come to them with this kind of a problem. I'm $200,000 in debt. I make $35,000. Fix it. And the advisor goes, I can't fix it. And then the person goes, well, fuck you then. You don't do anything. I'm going to flip the table and go to Google and say that you're terrible at your job. Because at the end of the day, they're looking for a hero to save them. Yeah. And there is no hero to come to save you. The advisors that get in trouble are the advisors that promise their clients that they are the hero that they are the hero. They are the Messiah. They are the person. You are the hero yep. of your own story. Yep. This video podcast is sponsored by Mons on Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.